Hey, what's going on Guardians? Gray here with another Destiny 2 video. In today's video, we're going to be going over everything you need to know for Solstice of Heroes. Whether you're a new player or a returning player, Solstice of Heroes is Bungie's summertime event for Destiny 2. And it's a really fun event and you can earn some really cool armor and some really unique rewards. So I wanted to give a brief overview of how the event functions. And then I'm going to go in depth with some of the most optimal paths you could take to finish your armor as quickly as possible. The entire event revolves around upgrading a set of armor to its maximum level. It looks super awesome when you get there. I'll show all sorts of stuff in the video here so you can check it out. But I want to go over the best ways to go about that. It's different for each class. So I'm going to try and cover each class and I'll leave timestamps down in the description so you can hop towards right where you need to be so you can just get straight to business with whatever class you're playing. So if you enjoy the video, please leave a like below and consider hitting that subscribe button for me so I can keep you up to date on all things Destiny 2. But with that being said, let's dive into what Solstice of Heroes is gonna be all about this year. So Solstice of Heroes is an event that centers all around unlocking and upgrading a set of armor for your guardian. Right when you start the event, you're going to go to the tower and Eva Levante will be there and she's gonna give you a base set of armor with a set of objectives on it that you need to complete in order to upgrade it to the next level of armor. You'll get start with a green set, then it'll turn blue. Eventually, you'll turn it into a legendary set. But there's a bunch of objectives we need to complete all throughout the game, all the different game modes and things like that. And that's what the whole event centers around. There's also a lot of really cool things. We're going to have the EAZ is a zone that is solely for the purpose of this event. It's a really cool area. It has a lot of verticality to it. And you're gonna go here and you're just fighting mobs, basically. It's like a horde mode type thing. You fight waves of enemies, you knock them out, and then you get to open up a bunch of chests at the end, depending on how much progress you made in the EAZ. So it's a really fun little activity to dive into. It's gonna tie itself into the armor progression a lot. So get used to it and familiarize with how it works. There's also a rotating element every single day. It'll be one of the three, Solar, Arc, or Void. And you're gonna to wanna to match that element with your subclass on any given day to help generate the elemental orbs that you need to collect for your armor. So that's kind of the gist of it. There's a lot more intricacies to it, but I'll get into it with when I dive into how you're gonna upgrade your armor. So initially, when you're upgrading your green set of armor, pretty much across all of your classes, you're gonna have generally the same objectives, just you'll need to use different subclasses depending on what you're playing on. But starting off the most efficient route, you're going to need to do five strikes and you need to get 50 headshots or precision kills and collect elemental orbs. That's going to be the first thing you can work on. If you're playing on a Titan or a Warlock, you're going to want to use a Solar subclass for this. And if you're playing on a Hunter, you're going to want to use an Arc subclass for this. And it's just to help you, again, knock out those orbs. You're going to need a lot of those. And once you complete those five strikes and get those precision kills, you're gonna to need to move on to either Crucible or Gambit. You need to do five Crucible or Gambit matches. You need to get 25 Guardian kills while collecting the elemental orbs. You're gonna need Void orbs as a Titan, Arc orbs as a Warlock, and Solar orbs as a Hunter. So keep that in mind with either game mode. It's probably gonna be quickest if you hop into Crucible just to knock out those Guardian kills quickly. After that, you're going to need to dive into the EAZ and complete multiple runs in the EAZ. You need to collect those Solstice packages that you earn from the event itself. You're going to need to run an Arc subclass on Titan, a Void subclass on Warlock, or a Solar subclass on Hunter while you're doing these EAZ runs. From there, you need to complete five adventures anywhere in the game. This will can help you finish out those precision kills, collecting orbs, and trying to get some super kills that you'll need just in general you can kind of do while you're doing these. Once you finish those, you need to do five public events, again, working on those precision kills, orbs, and super kills. Once you've gone through these, you probably might, you might need a, a few extra kills here or there. I think there's an objective to kill a certain race 
depending on what class you're on. You can just find a lost sector that has this race on it. There's tons of ways to look it up and find the best ones available and just use that to flush out anything you need to complete before we move on to the renewed set of armor. So if you thought the green set of armor was a bit of a grind, boy, are you going to be in for a surprise because upgrading the blue set of gear to that legendary majestic set of armor requires quite the grind, guys. I mean, it really does take some time, so don't feel bad. If you can't get it all done in one day, you don't need to. This event lasts plenty long enough to finish this up on whatever class you're going to. And a lot of people end up finishing it on all three characters. So take your time. These types of things are just to help you optimize your time. If you're going after multiple sets across multiple classes, it's worth taking a minute to optimize what you need to do. So with that being said, we're gonna take a look at each of the separate classes and the most optimal route, depending on what you're going after. So starting off and in no particular order, we're just going to start off with the Warlock's Majestic Path is sort of what I'm calling it to go from the renewed set of armor to your legendary Majestic set of gear. It's quite a grind and this is here just to help you organize where subclasses you should be running depending on what activities you're doing. So initially starting out, you're going to need to do 10 Gambit matches and you need to match the daily subclass rotator while you're doing this, if possible. You want to try and use a void weapon on combatants inside of Gambit. And if you can, try to use a solar weapon against enemy guardians inside of Gambit if possible. That might sound a little difficult, but if you can do something like a beloved sniper rifle, that's a solar weapon that can get you some quick kills. Some of those guardian kills in Gambit if you feel like going after those. Otherwise, use something like gnawing hunger while clearing out ads inside of Gambit. After you've completed your 10 games, go ahead and move on because we can clean up some of those objectives later on. Next, you're going to need to dive into the Crucible. And as a Warlock, you're going to want to run an Arc subclass because you need to get some super kills as an Arc subclass. If possible, you're going to want to use solar weapons, solar energy weapons. And after you get all of those solar weapon kills against Guardians, you can move on to the next step. From there, you will want to do 10 heroic public events, as well as five patrols on Titan. Of course, you need to be matching the daily subclass while you do this, so you can be generating those elemental orbs so you're not wasting any time. So make sure you're collecting those orbs and getting void weapon kills while you're working on these to help fill out those other objectives, like I was saying. Lucky for us, uh, lucky for us warlocks on Titan, we have the contact public event going on right now, so it should go pretty quickly and you'll get some decent rewards for putting your time in there at least. After you complete that, you're gonna need to dive into the strikes playlist and of course match that daily subclass again and work on those void weapon kills. This is a great place to grind out the rest of the weapon kills and get a ton of elemental orbs and flush out your gear. Once you get those void weapon kills close and get the strike objectives done, you're gonna need to dive into the EAZ once again to do some more runs there and you need to focus on getting hive defeats with the matched daily subclass. So pretty much most of the time you need to make sure you're matching that daily rotator. And again, just work on those void weapon kills. If after you've completed all of these, you still need to clear up some mobs, dive into a lost sector and use the appropriate weapons and stuff that you need to help finish out that gear. If you follow this path, it should at least allow you to get this done in a timely manner. There may be more efficient ways than this, but from what I can tell, if you just knock these things out in an efficient manner, you can get it done relatively quickly. We're going to move on to the Titan class now and talk about what they need for their armor. So moving on over to my Titan brethren and taking a look at what you need to do for your armor. Again, initially, you're going to need to do those 10 Gambit matches. And for this, you need to match the daily subclass. You're going to want as a Titan, you're going to need solar weapon enemy kills and if possible, try and get Guardian kills with an Arc weapon inside of Gambit. It's just helped to, like I said before, you just flush out other objectives if you can focus on these weapon types while you're doing these things. After you complete those 10 Gambit matches, you can go ahead and move on. And the next step is going to be to dive again back into the Crucible. You need to match the daily subclass here, and you're going to need Arc weapon kills again. You're working on getting those Guardian Arc weapon kills once you complete all of those and get the Crucible matches completed, 
you can move forward to the next step. And for Titans, we're going to need to do 10 heroic public events and five patrols on IO. You need to match the daily subclass while you're doing this so you can be collecting those elemental orbs and work on those solar weapon kills while you're doing this to help complete that objective. You need a lot of those solar weapon kills and a lot of orbs, so it's always good to be optimizing your time while doing these sort of miscellaneous activities. Once you get those done, you can move into the strikes playlist and we're gonna switch it up a little bit here. You still need to match the daily subclass, but we need to work on some void weapon kills as well. So make sure you're doing that while you're in the strikes playlist. Once you complete those strikes, you can move on to the EAZ and start doing the EAZ runs. For the Titans, we need to defeat Fallen with the match daily subclass, and we need to work on solar melee kills and solar weapon kills. If you use middle tree solar titan, it's a really easy way to get those solar melee kills. You have the throwing hammer. It stacks, it ramps up. As you get kills with it, you'll deal more damage, making it easier. And you can pick it right back up so you always have your melee. That's a quick way to help you get that done. I remember it from last year. It was a bit of a struggle, but that's probably your best bet. And again, if you need any cleanup after you've run through these objectives, find a good lost sector to kill some fallen and you'll be able to clear out your gear. So that's it for the Titans, just for that Majestic set. We're gonna take a look at what the Hunters need to do here next. And last, but certainly not least, the Hunter armor. We, of course, are going again to start off with those 10 Gambit matches where you match the daily subclass. For Hunters, you're gonna want Arc Weapon enemy kills, and if possible, get Void Weapon Guardian kills inside of Gambit. Once you've completed your 10 matches, you can go ahead and move on to the next objective, which of course, like the other two classes, would be to dive into Crucible. Of course, match that daily subclass again. Use You need Void Weapon kills, and you can just focus on that in the Crucible. Luckily for Hunters, just focus on using Void Weapons. You can use things like Gnawing Hunger, Hammerhead, things like that to make that go very quickly so you can move on. After you complete that, you're gonna need to do 10 heroic public events and five patrols in the EDZ. Hunters sorta of get the short end of the stick on this one as the other two classes take place where the contact public event is going on. So it's colored of time versus rewards. You might be able to get this done faster in the EDZ, but you won't get as many of those umbral engrams. But that's besides the point. While you're doing this, you're gonna to want to match the daily subclass, make sure you're collecting those orbs and getting arc weapon kills while you're chasing these things down. Once you do that, you can move into the strikes playlist, again, where you need to match that daily subclass and focus on arc weapon kills throughout the strikes. Once we've completed all of that stuff, again, the last step will be to dive into the EAZ. Hunters need to get a lot of fallen defeats with the match daily subclass and you need to focus on getting Void Grenade kills and Arc Weapon kills. The Void Grenade one's a little difficult for the Hunters, not gonna lie, guys. If you use something like the Frosty's Exotic Boots, it's at least a decent way to try and get your grenade to come back as quick as possible. Um, I would recommend using Void Wall. We do have at least access to Oppressive Darkness this season, which will make those Void Grenades do a lot more damage, so it should help you get a little bit more of those kills a little easier. And just like the other classes, finding a good lost sector to help you farm some of these things out is never a bad idea if you need to flush out some of those objectives. So I know those are a lot to go over. Hopefully you were able to find exactly what you needed for your exact class. But once you've completed that renewed armor set, we still have one more final set of objectives to complete to finish our armor. Luckily, this is a universal set of objectives across all of our characters. And they're not too difficult to complete. If you're working on pinnacles, doing in-game stuff, you'll knock these out almost passively as you play the game. But taking a look at those objectives, we have a few that we need to talk about. It looks like you're going to need to complete a Master Nightfall ordeal, which isn't too bad. I mean, that's actually not that difficult. It doesn't have matchmaking for something like that. So keep that in mind. You're going to need to put a team together if you want to do that. You're going to need to do a Nightmare Hunt on the Moon which is super easy. You can hop right in and complete that. You need to complete the Pit of Heresy on the moon as well, the dungeon there. It's a really cool dungeon. Definitely dive in if you haven't had a chance to. The hardest thing on here is probably going to be you need seven wins inside of Trials of Osiris to finish one of these pieces of gear. It doesn't have to be on the same card, though. You can literally just at any point, if you get seven wins, you'll be able to finish that objective. It does not have to be on the same card. 
You don't have to go flawless or anything like that. The final step will be to kill the final boss in Altars of Sorrow three times. That one's not too bad at all. The other thing I want to point out here, these magnificent upgrades for the final set of gear will be able to, you can complete them at any given point. So even if you don't finish these before Solstice of Heroes ends, you'll be able to bust out these objectives later on. So that is a nice thing to keep in mind. If you're having trouble with those trials wins, taking you longer than expected, you have plenty of time to unlock that. So the glows this year are really, really cool. I wanna give a quick shout to them real quick. Once you complete the magnificent set of gear, you're gonna unlock a white armor glow for your gear. It's going to glow white. It's really cool the way they have it this year. As your super charges, you will glow brighter and brighter until your super is fully charged and you'll be glowing like the sun. You'll look totally crazy. But it's a neutral white glow, which is a little bit interesting, but the Eververse is offering the other three glows in the store there. You can buy them with bright dust, so don't fear. You don't have to pull out your wallet necessarily. But these function really cool because there's the arc set, the void set, and the solar set, of course, but they are universal ornaments. You can only purchase these once you've fully completed your set from Solstice of Heroes, but these will be universal ornaments from now until forever. This is much, much better than the way it went last year. We kind of got screwed out of our gear a little bit. We got 2.0 versions of the Solstice gear, but it had terrible stats and no one used it. So this will be nice that it'll be universal ornaments. You can put it on any gear from here until forever. So you don't have to worry about choosing fashion over high stat gear. I assume this is sort of how the transmog system is probably going to work in the future. Hopefully it'll just be easier to pull things and use them as universal ornaments. So maybe we're getting a little preview of that here, but either way, it's going to be pretty nice to just be able to slap those ornaments on at any given time. And they'll always match your equipped subclass. So you don't have to worry about juggling between the three colors or glows whenever you need to. It'll just do it for you automatically. So that's going to be your sort of Solstice of Heroes 2020 guide and wrap up. I hope you enjoyed the video and got what you needed out of it. Again, if you did, a like below is super appreciated and consider hitting that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and want to see more videos like this. I hope everyone has the best of luck hunting down the Solstice gear. It is a long grind so don't don't burn yourself out pace yourself you have plenty of time to complete all of this stuff so make sure to dive in and optimize it as best you can because there is a unique reward if you complete all three sets of gear we don't know what that is yet we'll know starting in just a little while from when this video goes live thank you guys for stopping by again good luck chasing down that gear take care